Hello, my name is Crystal Chibu and I'm your Hope Catalyst. Happy Independence, Nigeria! our independence day and i want to thank god because as a nation we are still together even though a lot of things you know have tried to pull us apart as a country so i still think it's good that we're here so happy independence um today on the hope grill um i have a man that needs no introduction i personally love him he's a financial analyst he's a man enthusiast and um he loves this nation very passionately it's none other than mr inka ogunobi you're welcome to the hope grill thank you crystal and happy independence day nigeria happy independence i know that there's so much you know and there's so many parts to you and so many things that we can unfold mm -hmm. but there's this bit that i'm not sure you know a lot of people know about and i know how you've worked through the journey is one that is a fantastic one mm -hmm. so autism is a type of disability that mm -hmm. um, is being diagnosed a lot in our country mm -hmm. today and i know you've had your fair share sure. about that you might want to tell us what that is about and how it has been so far well it's great i mean it's um it's a very emotional subject for me and uh, i recall when i tried uh, after many years to have that conversation i actually uh, became very emotional talk talking about it um, it's a story of how a father loves a child, a, a, a male child. And you see how that child is unable to come to, to light, is, is unable to communicate, is unable to be what you always imagine your son to be. And, um, and watching you know, that over a number of years was, uh, was very challenging. Um, to put it in a nutshell, it was a story of denial, and, and, and that's where I think most, most uh, people uh, uh, handling autistic children start from, most fathers, let me put it that way. There's a, there's a case of denial, because you, you see all the evidence in front of you, it's clear in front of you, but you don't want to admit the fact that this is exactly what you see. And so when uh, um, maybe your wife or maybe somebody else, a family member is pointing it, pointing it out to you, you, you don't want to admit uh, that. And you, you keep saying things like, uh, it's not my portion, it's not our portion, you know, uh, the boy will grow out of it at some point and all that. And that's exactly what happened to us, you know, to me. And uh, it got to the point where um, we had a particular experience uh, where I was having a, a ceremony in my house, I think it was my birthday. And a pastor friend came to pray for for us, and the prayer then became a prayer for my son. So the the pastor turned around from just praying for me and said, "Pray for my son that you know God will open his mouth, God will you know heal him." And I became very embarrassed because at that point it became obvious to me that you know it's so obvious to everybody what was going on that there was just something not right with the young man. And all that. And so for the first time, I took my wife's advice and I said, you know what, we need to check this out. And you know, there might be a lot of people that are listening to you, probably even seeing sign and they don't even know what it is. What is autism? And what are some of the signs that people would see or can see? And you might begin to say, okay, I probably need to get help. Yeah, you know, autism, you know, it's, it's the, the medical name is um, ESD, you know, um, and it, it is a developmental disorder. And the funny thing is that it's not something that can be diagnosed with a blood test or with some kind of uh, medical uh, apparatus. It's, it's diagnosed by looking at certain behavioral um, uh, 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 milestones. Okay. And you know, the, the inability of the child to meet those behavioral milestones eventually leads to those, those, those kind of diagnosis. And 
it works because sometimes you can't say uh, for sure whether it's autistic until probably when the child is three years old. Wow. So, so you can imagine a child who is not speaking for year one, year two, and then you can't say for sure until probably year three that yes, the child has you know, uh, uh, aut autism. So in, in a nutshell, it's a developmental disorder you know, that I impacts the, the, the child. And what they've tried to do now over the years is they try to develop a, a spectrum where they try to um, identify where the child is on that spectrum. So sometimes it can be very high, it can be medium or it can be low. But the point is where the you know, clinical um, experts diagnose that this is where the child is on the, on the spectrum. It determines the, the level of intervention that the child will, will require. I, I think I want to dwell a little bit more on you, and especially for fathers. I, I think, I, and I could be wrong, I stand a chance to be corrected, that you know when it really comes to, each, to disability and all of that, it looks like the mothers are a bit more uh, receptive or, you know, and the fathers are a little bit in denial. And I know you're a person of faith. Yes. And so, did you ever feel like you were the problem or something was wrong with you? Or did you ever think your God made a mistake or something <laughs> with, when it came to your child? Uh, Crystal is, is, is emotional. I you know. know I, I, I didn't want to accept that anything was wrong with my child. I, and I think it's, it's, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong in admitting that. I, I didn't want to, to accept that. My, 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 my wife, from year one, was telling me something was wrong. You know, and the part of me, there was a part of me that said, no, you know, women are always very, you know, uh, they, they just want to create problems where there's no problem. And they just want to be alarmist for no reason. You know, and as a person of faith, I relied on, you know, my, what I felt was, uh, what I should do, what I should think, how I should think, and I should not even give uh, presence of mind to that thought that something is wrong. So I dwelled on that. And so whenever she raised up the subject of, let's talk about this, I shut it down. I never allowed it. I never allowed those conversations because I didn't feel, I felt that it was not acting in faith. Mm -hmm. But I, I cha what changed my view was, re was the realization that the only time you can actually get help is when you acknowledge the mm. challenge. So that denying that that challenge is there, you know, it is, is you know, is in itself not helping your, uh, uh, the situation or helping the child. And, and that's what I tell people. I tell, uh, you know, uh, autistic parents that, you, you know, accepting the fact that the child is autistic is not a defeat. Is actually an, an a, a a kind of release in yourself, and probably a step to victory. A step in the right direction to say, you know what, this is the problem. We're going to solve it. Mm. You know, I, I, and that was exactly what happened. You know, to 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 me, and I think from my interaction with a lot of fathers as well, it's the same challenge that I've seen. A lot of fathers don't want to accept that reality. They don't want to believe there's anything wrong with their child. And because of that, the the family is unable to take action. I mean, I, I was talking. I'll, I'll give an example. I was talking to a couple uh, once, and she she called me from worry when she read, you know, uh, about my story, and uh, she said she 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 wanted to talk about a adult a uh, daughter, you know, that um, she can't talk. She's uh, you know she she believes that she's autistic. And I said, how old is she? She said, she's uh, nine. So, wow. nine years old. I said, and I asked her, when did you know? She said, since she was two. Whew. And I said, what happened between two and nine? She said, my husband refused us to do anything, believing that it's a demonic attack and that the child will find, you know, the, the demon will, will, will go at some point. And, but that's not the case. So, so the point really is, the earlier parent gets the help you know, uh, seek the help that the child needs, the better chance for that child to to, to be eventually well. Uh, and we must tell ourselves that truth. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. We'll just go on a break. And we still will have Mr. Ogunobi in 
the grill and we'll be talking a little bit more about what you need to do, the kind of help you need to seek if you have a child that needs help. Welcome back. Mr. Gunubi, you were talking about, you know, the, the seeking help and all of that. So how, how do I know? So I'm a parent and I'm just there. I, I know there's a problem really, and I'm not very sure. Or I even know now that my child is autistic. I don't have money. I, I don't know what to do. I'm from a very, uh, you know, humble background. What are the critical steps that you think I should take to be able to uh, get the needed help? Well, in the first place, you need all the help you can get. Uh, whether this help is coming from institutional organizations that you can go to, or whether it's coming from family, you need help. And, and you, you shouldn't really be scared to admit it. I, I need help, yeah. you know, and all that. So, so, so that's the first thing. Um, uh, you need help, and so you should seek help. Secondly, um, concerning the child, the child needs therapy. Okay. And unfortunately, it's pretty much expensive, you know. So, so it depends on the, the 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 nature of the autism, you know, to determine the degree of the uh, of the therapy. You know, so in some cases, it might just be behavioral therapy, or it could just be language uh, language therapy. But the reality is, that it's expensive. And what some of us have tried to do is to begin to have these conversations to say, look, not many parents have the capacity yeah. to be able to afford this kind of therapy. And, and the reason why it's expensive is because the therapies are not many. You know, so the law of demand and supply really is just, is just driving, driving the prices up. So, but, you know, organizations should come in, you know, and to, to assist so that uh, either in terms of training more therapy so that there can be more of them around or in terms of actually really subsidizing the cost of this therapy. So if you, if you are able to provide help for the child, the next thing is to see how you can provide help for yourself. For yourself. Yeah. Because you need help. Number one is if you're a couple, your relationship needs help. So, so, so tell me more about that. Uh, uh, because I, I mean, I would I, imagine that you both know that there's an issue now so, and you have a problem that you're trying to solve. So why should... I mean, I've, I've had to cancel couples who separated because the they had an autistic child wow. and it's not because there was lack of love it was just because the stress from caring from that kind of child uh put additional weight on the on the marriage that okay. eventually you know collapsed so what i say is is, is that uh, this kind of couples they, they should look for opportunities to have you know to to ignite the the passion you know so that's why you need help so if you have a family, if you have neighbors, if you have, uh, you know, and all that, let them watch over the child for you for a day. So go for a date night. Go and watch a movie. You know, do things that is still what couples do, you know, and get that passion out because you need that energy to be able to last another day. Yeah. Caring for an autistic child is a 24 hour. 247, 365 days. And how job. do you mean? I mean, I. How do you mean 24 hours? So is it like you have to watch over the child? Does the child not you, sleep? Um, I mean... You, you can't leave the child alone for without, you know, uh, watching over the child. But I also know that they say, or it is true, that children that are autistic, you know, they have this one thing that they are very good at. They're almost like geniuses. Because I know one that, yes, he didn't talk till he was about seven years old. And when he started talking at seven, he could remember the things that happened to him, yes. even when he was like three years old. And he said everything, everywhere they've been. And the, with the names of the people that he met at that time. It, so, it, was, it was the same thing with my son, you know. Um, uh, I mean, right now he's a, he's a genius, basically. I mean, he plays chess with guys who are like uh, far older than him and he wow. beats them. You know, he's, he's the best chess player in the school. He's good at math. He's the head of 
is the is the, is the um, best student in maths in the, in the school. He has a photographic memory. In fact, the when he started to talk, um, he, you know, um, he, he he took a book and, and just started reading it. Wow. You know, just started reading it word for word. You know, and, and that's what we knew. We knew that everything he ever heard, it was stored somewhere in his memory. But the challenge was how to express himself at some point. So these kids are, you know, uh, they are they are super intelligent. So you when know, he started talking, how did you jump? Did you? I cried. I literally uh, cried. You know, you did? I, myself and my wife. I, I thought I, men I, don't I, cry. I, and that's a very, that's a very, that's the one sight you don't want to see, honestly. You know, and uh, I, I wasn't there. My wife was the one there, and um, apparently his sister uh, was uh, something happened, and then he chased her out of the room. And while he was chasing her, he was screaming, "Give me!" Give me, give me, whatever it was, it was, you know, and then my wife had it, and then she called me on the phone and he said, you know. Wow. He said, give me, and I didn't put it, and I cried on the phone. It was, it was very funny. Um, but ever since then, he, he never stopped. He mm. never stopped. And um, right now, the punishment for Daniel for any infraction is five minutes of silence. It's wow. ironic, you know, that a guy that couldn't talk for five to six years of his life you know the punishment for him right now is that just don't talk so how did you minutes. manage with school because i i mean i can imagine in in a place like africa where you know school is about talking it's all of those things and he couldn't talk till it was like five six yeah and at that age you should already have been in school it wasn't and right. i assume that you already put him in school how yeah. did you manage that bit uh of his life it's a very uh, good question one of the things that we real, realized is which impacts parents with autistic children is the fact that schools are not inclusive. Uh, by inclusive, it means that the, most schools right now uh, don't have provisions for caring for special needs children. You know, and because they just need a little bit more, they need, they need attention, they need special care, and all that stuff. And schools that already have enough handling, you know, other children mm -hmm. find it hard to be able to dedicate some activities to them. So. Uh, but we were p uh, particularly fortunate to have a, a, a lady um, who was a proprietress of a school, and she just had a passion for for, for Daniel for whatever reason. So um, she told us that um, she would take him in, and she would give particular attention to him, and she did. You know, and and that's where you know I, I want to digress a bit that. Uh, for autistic children, it's important for them to be in regular school. In regular schools. It's important for them because they learn more from other children than from what even their therapist tells them. I mean, I think you should so, just look right into the camera and tell people that they need the inclusion of children with disability. Okay. L l let me put it straight to you. I mean, first for teachers and school uh, um, administrators. We need to have inclusive schools. So you need to train your teachers how to handle special needs children. If you don't already have those uh, kind of uh, facilities in place, please get, employ one or train some of your teachers to be, able to, do, to be able to do that. And part of that process is to ensure that this kind of children are given, you know, special care that they need because because with that they can be better. And then secondly, if you are um, you are in a position to influence schools in terms of their administration and co, please also ensure that as part of the registration, the schools themselves have shown evidence that they have they have inclusive facilities to care for all kinds of children whether they are autistic or they are not. And so the men out there, because I, I mean, I know you love men very yes. passionately. I also want you to talk to the men and tell our fathers out there the important role that they can play in the life of their children at large and even the ones with disability. For autistic children or just children? No, I, I think generally children and 
children with disability because I, I mean you've shown a lot of emotions mm. here uh, today you've shown how you were I mean when you said you cried I was like oh you cried but, but I mean somehow men don't cry men don't really get involved I am privileged to work with a lot of children with disability mm. and I realized that fathers don't come they don't come it's only the mothers that come and say oh my child needs to get a prosthesis my my child has cerebral palsy oh my child has down syndrome it's only the mothers so you probably Probably out of 10 parents, you see just uh, 10 of them will be women and just two men will show up. So I just want you to talk to, and I know that you love men passionately and you talk to men a lot. So I want you to talk to the men out there on why they should be involved with their family. So to the men, if you find yourself with a special child and that child has some learning disabilities, Please don't be in denial. Uh, first, uh, realizing the fact that this child might not be growing normally is a natural reaction. But don't be in denial. Um, face up to it and determine to do something about it. And that something is to ensure that that child gets all the help that they need. Um, it is not a problem. It is not a sign of weakness for a man to to cry or to show to to show emotion, so be be willing to do so. It's not it doesn't talk, it doesn't uh, diminish you. It actually ele elevates you. So I want to challenge all men that are out that are out there. Your children are special. They deserve all the care that, that you can give, and they deserve to see you as you are, whether you are emotional or you are not. Thank you so much, Uncle Yinka, for coming today. Thanks, Crystal. I, I think um, in this nation, and especially since we're celebrating our independence, we need a lot more men like you. And I'm glad that you're here and you're trying to influence men. Thank um, you. Thank you for coming on The Hoop Girl. Thank you very much, Crystal. <laughs> I will hope that when we call you next time, you will call me again. Yes, I will. I will. Anytime. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Hope Grew. I am currently at a crossroad. I don't even know the direction in which my life is headed. Please help. At different points in our lives, we get to the crossroad where definitely we, we need help. And there's nothing wrong with getting help. Today, um, if you don't know what you should be doing, there are a lot of therapists, there are a lot of coaches out there. I want to employ you to get in touch and you get help. And also, um, we have a community called the Hope Grill Community in which you can join. When you join the Hope Grill Community, you get the access and help that you need and support actually and accountability that you need to be able to deliver on your dreams and your goals and even the goals that you did not have you begin to have goals so it's important for you to join a team of people that are going in the in a positive direction that way i think you will get help quote of the week hope can get you through anything I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with us today on The Hope Grill. Remember that it's okay to cry, even as a man. And I also want you to know that it's important for you to get help, the needed help, when you need the help. Until we see again, be hope, do hope, and give hope. And of course, happy independence, Nigeria. Bye. Bye.